You know, I don't want to keep Mac waiting, but I hate talking over this. It's a great song. Welcome back. Middays live in the Element Wealth Studios. Dave Hughes here. And joining us now, both on the air and on Super Talk TV, the executive director of MEMA, Stephen McCraney. Mac, how you doing today, sir? Uh, doing good. Uh, cicada report for Terry, Mississippi. is a lot of shells, a little bit of bugs. Okay, okay, so you're already getting the shells. Uh, do you have the noise is the question. I've lost a lot of hearing in the military. I, I can't hear them. <laughs> so, so you don't know. It, it doesn't impact you, so it's no problem That's whatsoever. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, now, let, let's get right to the first thing because I've got a couple of things uh, I want to go through with you if we have time and if we can. Uh, but the big one and the reason we have you here, it is Hurricane Preparedness Week. And I know every year when this week comes along, the general reaction is, oh, we know how to deal with the hurricane. We don't even want to start talking about this. But we have yeah. to talk about this and we have to focus on it uh, to get people kind of in the right mindset, right? We, we, you're, you're exactly correct. And we, we, we harp on it every year because every year, we do have a hurricane and we end up getting a federal declaration. People are, they're missing paperwork. They, they're there. We have to go rescue them because they stayed too long and, and things of that. So we, we just want to ring the bell for, Hey, everybody who's moved to Mississippi, it's a great state. Uh, you're new here. We just want you to be prepared as well. But, uh, then some of those outliers, uh, when we talks about know your risk, know your, uh, get, get your insurance information, ver verify what kind of coverage you have. I mean, that's that's pretty important to think you've got wind coverage and you don't or flood and you don't. So it's a it is a time just to do a checkup, just like going to get your teeth cleaned or going to the doctor once a year. Just get a checkup. And the other part of that is that varies from place to place in the state. You, you've got different coverage up in the Delta than you do down on the Mississippi Gulf Coast when it comes to a hurricane coming in for very obvious reasons. So you've got to check all that out. Absolutely. If you live in a place that doesn't require your lender doesn't require you to have flood insurance, you might not have it. But if you look at surge water and you look at other things and every hurricane brings rain, rain, rain and more rain. And you might get a little bit of uh, uh, rushing flood water that you don't normally get. So uh, evaluate where you are and just make sure you're comfortable with where you are. You're covered uh, on insurance wise, etc. We've gotten lucky the last several years uh, because they've been kind of bypassing our area, the storms as they come in. Lake Charles cannot say that, but we have gotten no. lucky and haven't really had the impact that we've had in uh, previous years. That kind of gets you lulled into a sense of false security because it hasn't happened in a while, doesn't it? It does. We were, you know, when I responded down to Katrina with the military, it, it, one of those things we heard was, well, we... We boarded up the house and we left and then we came back and nothing happened. We boarded up the house again during the same season, nothing happened. And then uh, there was Katrina and people, I'm not boarding up and I'm not leaving. Well, they got caught at, the, at that point. So what's your minimum? What's, what's your, what's your storm? Is it a tropical storm that will get you to leave? Leave every time. If it's a cat one, cat two, you look at those windages. Uh, and you gotta, you gotta understand all the services you enjoy might not be there even if you stay. So uh, that comfort of a cell phone charging, that, that, that uh, uh, comfort of being able to just uh, drive a couple of blocks or walk a couple of blocks and pick up some groceries, Listen, they're gonna close uh, because of, they're trying to, they've gotta take care of their employees as well so that that, that workforce is not gonna be there. Your emergency responders will be there, uh, but that normal workforce just might not be there. Yeah, so you have to take all of that into account when you're making your plans and deciding what you're going to do. But the most important part is, I, I think that we, we haven't really put our finger directly on this. Everything you've said is exactly right. But the first step in this is to have a plan. Decide where, where your limit is in advance, not when the storm's coming in. Do it now so that when it happens, you don't have to think about it because planning in advance is the key to a successful anything. And I know I'm preaching to the choir on that one. Absolutely. And it, it's, a, it, it's also one of those things, your neighbor across the street, you might wave at them every day. You know who they are. Um, but do you have a number? Do you know where they're going? You know, there's, there's one of those things when you get left behind, 
and then you start worrying because nobody's coming back? Did, did they make it out? Did they get somewhere? Did, do you have uh, elderly folks living to your left or right? It, it's, it's one of those things to make sure that, that uh, uh, the, the, the worry and despair doesn't hit you at a point when you're at the lowest in, in, in your life. And have a plan for your pets too. We, we, we learned some valuable lessons over the years and we now have shelters uh, throughout the state that will accept uh, uh, pets and whatnot because we, we've heard over and over when you rescue somebody, well, I wasn't gonna leave my pets. Well, okay, now look at our statewide list. Look at those that actually have, they'll, they'll large animals, small animal. You know, we don't want animals eating animals, so we gotta go, we're gonna keep some of them separated from the other ones. But, uh, but uh, all the way up here at the, at the Coliseum, we've, there, there's some folks that bring some prize um, uh, livestock and uh, horses and whatnot, and a goat last year, uh, that, that bring them up here. So there is a way to evacuate with that pet, AKA your family member, that you don't want to leave behind. Now, now, see, you've got me curious, and I'm going to have to go start digging and try to figure this out. You may know, but I, I wouldn't think so, because only somebody like me would ask this question. What's the weirdest animal somebody's brought to a shelter? You mentioned one goat last year. You have to wonder, has anything just totally bizarre shown up at a shelter in one of these situations because they didn't want to leave it behind? i got to go research yeah, this now. I'm kind of thinking, you know, the snakes, anacondas, whatnot, that's probably one that's not going to get in a shelter because the other little small animals might have issues with that. But the, the goat was actually a, a comfort animal for, for one of the uh, uh, horses. And that, that was his buddy. So if you take one, you got to take the other one. But uh, it is what it okay. is. Okay. I mean, with all the comfort animals we have uh, around there, we just want people to understand there is a place for you to go. You have to plan for it. You, you have to maybe not go uh, north on 55, maybe you go 59, and, uh, but get out of harm's way and let the responders actually respond to those dire circumstances that, that every plan did not work and we're still gonna try to do life safety and property safety, but it's life safety first. So get out of harm's way because there's a point when the first responders, myself and others, we're hunkering down, we're cutting it off, just like uh, the energy folks, uh, the, the linemen that, that uh, X amount of miles an hour, the buckets come down, they go to a safe place, and you're not getting response. And that's the worst time to be a first responder. I can remember it. Uh, you, the, the 911 calls come, and we say when the winds die down and, and, and the water, we can travel the road, we'll come back. That's going to be a while for you as you ride that cycle out. So that's something to be cognizant of. We're not supermen. We're not superwomen we have to uh, to be safe to be able to come back out and take care of you. Well, and that's exactly right. And I've told the story a million times, and it was a fairly special circumstance. But when Katrina came through down in Pike County, uh, the power was out at my house for three and a half weeks. Uh, oh, yeah. So this, is, this isn't, uh, you know, some sort of hypothetical that he's throwing out here. This is the way it works when these storms come through. And I know I'm preaching to the choir again uh, for longtime Mississippians, but as you mentioned early on when we started talking here, some folks have come into the state, have moved in, and we're thrilled to have you. But we really ought to put together some kind of informal uh, hurricane and severe weather buddy system for people that aren't used to dealing with the things that we've dealt with our entire lives. It's just we know how it works, but other people come in here and they don't. And we we kind of need a buddy system to get people kind of up to speed and, and hold their hand through the first time or two when these things happen, uh, because that is important. So reach out and find somebody. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. If you uh if you're, if you're on the coastal area, lower third of the state, and for the first time in a year, you see your neighbor picking up their lawn furniture and putting it away somewhere, you might ought to think about doing the same thing because of the wind and get, and, and get out of the way because that, they're preparing because they know. They, they know something's going on there. And it's a, uh, it's a, it's, it, it is the worst phone call ever at a 911 center and not be able to respond to send somebody out and you lose a you lose a responder and you lose another we're going to do everything we can do and uh i, I talked to some of the uh, uh responders in waveland yesterday uh we had a uh, at, at ground zero went back to ground zero where katrina came in uh and uh saw some of the the, the, 
the old guys and gals from when I responded during Katrina, still there, still responding, still doing it. We're still saying the same things. We do have an influx of population on the coast. So there, there was one of those uh, deals where all of our disaster guides, everything is on our website, MSEMA. Uh, it'll go through there. There's an old school book in there as well, like that I like because I write people's names and numbers and contact them. Matt, Matt, can you can you hold that thought? Can you stick around for a couple of more minutes? No, I'm here. I'm, I'm going to hear some more uh, cicada stories about the. There's a wasp that actually kills them. Oh, we we got to import those. We'll talk about that next. Bag Middays, live in the Element Wealth Studios. Dave Hughes here and uh, Executive Director of MEMA, Stephen McCraney, joining us here. I, I got one I've got to share with you before we get back into the cicadas. Uh, Ron White on the C Spire text line, somebody said, as Ron White once said, it's not how fast the wind's blowing, it's what the wind is blowing. That's the problem. And, and there, there's fun. a lot of truth in that. Yeah. Yeah, it'll smack you right upside the head in a heartbeat. Uh, you mentioned a cicada killer wasp. Can we import those? Can you buy those at the pet store? Well, I'll tell you what. It's a formidable-looking creature. You need to you just YouTube it or, or Google it, whatever you want to do. But here's the deal. Okay, you talk, the song that was on right then, it's all right to be itty-bitty. Well, guess what? The female is the only one with a stinger, kills the cicada, stings it in the stomach, lays it upside down in the nest where the other wasp can just feast off of it. So I like them. You know, that is at the same time disturbing and wonderful all at once. I like Because you know, right now, anybody that's dealing with them, yeah, they would like to see a swarm of cicada killers coming in. Don't let one get you, though. I actually had one of those sting me on the ear a couple of years ago. Out of nowhere, oh, just came it, flying up. This too. Two and a half inches long. Yes. It it's was like pretty, getting shot by short. a nail gun. It was ridiculous. <laughs> exactly. And the, the worst part is this whole side of my head swole up. I don't know if you remember this, Rhino. I tried my best to hide it because I have this habit when I come in here. I've been doing this for so long. When I go to put my headphones on, a lot of times, just out of habit, I just slap them up there like that. Well, this ear was out to here. I'm not thinking. I'm concentrating on what I'm doing. I'm getting ready to go on the air. I slapped those up there and almost passed out live on the air yep. when it hit it because the whole side of my head was swollen up. Uh, those things are vicious, but I would still take them, I think, over the cicadas uh, in, in the long run here. Uh, now, we're talking about hurricane preparedness week, but I want to veer off just a little bit because of the okay. other severe weather that we're having. And once again, right now, we're somewhat getting lucky, especially compared to the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. They had, uh, yeah. I think it was 17 tornadoes across seven states last night as that system continues to work through there. But this is still a big problem we've got to be aware of and be ready for uh, pretty much every day, I think, don't we? Yeah, every day in Mississippi. It, uh, it'll, it'll rain. You'll get some sleet, two inches of snow. Nobody can drive. No, no, no food in the grocery stores. And then... A hurricane will throw tornadoes at you. You know, Mother Mother Nature always has the note has has a vote. And if you look at, I heard you talking earlier about how many. What's what's the forecast for this year? So, twenty three named storms, eleven hurricanes, five major storms. I'm gonna hold this finger up. One, one is all it takes. And if you get a slow tropical storm that's gonna drop inches and inches and inches and inches of water then you, you've, got a, you've got a huge flooding factor in places that have never done it before. So it only takes one. I, I, I get that they want to uh, put, put those numbers out there. I'm not going to dispute them with them. I do think we're cyclic uh, with the way the weather patterns work. And it just sometimes we uh, do well. Sometimes we get the dust off the African coast, which is a, is a hurricane killer for me. It just I love it. It just like sprinkling uh, the white powder in an ant bed, and then the next day they're gone. I mean, it just, it, 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 it does a very good job. And, uh, we're just, but we're not going to have the wind shear off those tropical islands uh, that we normally have, uh, so to speak, like we did last year. That, that wind shear really cuts a hurricane in half. And it just, and then it throws them out there at sea. I know the Navy and the sailors don't, don't like that, but I would rather them stay out there. So uh, uh, be prepared for the one. And you hit on it a little while ago, the, the being lackadaisical, being... Well, it's it, it's not going to come. It's 
pay attention. I mean, we're watching them as soon as they form. I mean, we're looking at it. You've got Noah that's flying. You've got the hurricane hunters that are flying. And, and we're actually, our technology from 26, from 2005 and six to now is leagues. I mean, think about how many computers or phone versions you've gone through on cell phone. We've done the same thing with the capability, the understanding, the programming, uh, the forecasting thereof to, to chase a surge line up into the state. You know, we're, we're, we're watching what happens there. So it's a, uh, uh, the National Weather Service uh, on the coast here in Jackson. Uh, we have four of them that run the state and uh, they're, they're, they're great partners and got some great products out there. Well, and, you know, I, I think you make a great point because you and I both remember it wasn't that long ago. Uh, we would sometimes have a surprise when a, when a tropical system was coming in and everything said it was going right here. No, wound up over here somewhere. Uh, but we have gotten so good at this. I don't remember the last time we had a major miss over the past several years in terms of the forecast path, where it was going to go and what strength it was going to be when it got there, which makes it more important than ever to listen when these exactly. watches and warnings are put out. You know, the uh, field goal kicker kicks between the goalposts, right? But you're in the stadium and you can watch the game. So know that you're in the stadium. Know you might be in an impact zone. There can be a shank. There can be this, that, and the other. Just like trying to play golf with me ahead of me. You don't know where I'm going to hit the ball. So uh, it, I think it's going out that direction. But we're, we're, we're down to where, you know, in the earlier sections of those, you know, we can get one to three, maybe four days. We're, we're real tight on that, on, on that cone. But then we're going to give you our best guesstimates of what we think might happen on that eight, nine, ten day out. So uh, just don't don't go off the grid and bury your head for seven days because you'll find out one's in the Gulf and it's barreling. And then you can always get that unforeseen the the, the wag, the Katrina wag, is it is it moved back over and and got Mississippi. Uh, and and a couple of them do that. They have that last little just before they get on landfall, they'll jump. Uh, left or right. And so we're giving you our best guess of all the years of service that uh, the National Weather Service has, the National uh, Hurricane Center, you name it. I mean, I've got people that call me personally from up there. Hey, you're watching this, right? I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm watching it. I'm, I'm, I'm all over this one. Uh, I love a, I love a miss. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm also friends with the emergency management directors in Florida, Alabama. Um, uh, Georgia, uh, the Southeastern Conference, Region 4 of disasters. I mean, we're, we're going to get them. We know somebody within there. We're going to go help them if we don't get hit. If we get hit, they're coming here to help us. Same thing with Rolling Four. Florida came and helped me there tremendously uh, during that tornado. And it could just be one tornado. You might not get the big hurricane. You'll get the tornado, though, and it will decimate your, your, your area. We know that. Well, and... That, that, that's the thing that makes hurricanes and tropical systems so dangerous. It's not a weather event. It is an entire mass of weather events just crammed into one yeah. small space. You've got tornadoes. You've got straight line winds. You've got severe flooding. You've got thunderstorm activity. You've got lightning strikes. You've got, it, it, it's the entire bumper crop package of bad weather in one big lump. So you have to prepare for everything. And a lot of times, if it's going to be big enough, the best way to prepare is to just get the heck out of the way. Go take a, go, go stay somewhere else. Call your, call your friends and, and uh, just ri ride it out somewhere else, but wait on the local emergency managers and your state folks to tell you when it's good to come back in, because then you've got some infrastructure, you've got lights back, you've got uh, stoplights that are working, you've got uh, water that might be flowing again. Uh, within certain jurisdictions that might uh, lose lose that capability for you. Yeah, there are so many factors to consider. Sometimes the best preparedness you can make is just figure out where you're going. You know, we, we talk about uh, having a plan for your home if there's a fire. You're supposed to rehearse. You're supposed to practice. Uh, who's going where? How are you getting out? Have you done that for hurricanes? Yep. Say, same process, same thing. with my son's. When they were young and in school, I had a bell inside the house, almost like a big dinner bell, like one outside. If you hear that ringing, you go to the oak tree in the backyard and both of you better be hugging it. I mean, that's where I want get out of the house. And they would ring it every now and then. And they're my wife or mother and I would be, we'd be running out 
Oh, good joke, guys. But it's practice. It's practice. It's knowing. No, know where your family member in another state's going to go. Maybe they get hit. Where they go? Were they coming to you and they didn't make it? Did, where? What is just your basic? Who? What? Where? When? How? How long? Sometimes. If you if you just get those basics down and uh, write your phone numbers in a notebook as well, because when you run out of power, you might you can maybe borrow somebody else's phone to dial the number you don't know. When the lights go out and the wind is picking up, is the wrong time to try to figure out what you're going to do. You should have done that way before. That's the point of Hurricane Preparedness Week, which is this week. So listen to Mac. The man's got a lot of sense. I know you probably sometimes just sit in your office and go, nobody's listening to me. But uh, trust me, people are listening to you. I shake my head from time to time. Oh, I have no doubt. I know all too well you do. Uh, but just keep up the good work. Man, you're doing a great job, and uh, we, are, we are lucky to have you here in Mississippi. Well, we've got some great folks on the coast that are first responders, and we want to help them anytime we can and uh, when we're supposed to. So th- thanks for having us on. Stephen McCraney, Executive Director of the Mississippi Emergency Management Agency. We continue on this Tuesday on Middays in the Element Wealth Studios next.